BFTB boxing best fight to best so everybody is up in arms about this deal that Wilder gave Hearn and they're trying to make every excuse to make it seem as if Wilder is the one that's avoiding the deal so let's put this in better terms okay let's put this in better terms simpler terms for the idiots and the, and the AJ protectors out there okay so we'll do this real simple Anthony Joshua has a Bugatti. The Bugatti is called the IBF, WBO, and WBA belts. That's what it's called. Anthony Joshua is trying to sell those WBA, WBA, WBO, IBF belts. They're trying to, he's trying to sell his Bugatti, right? So being that it is a Bugatti, you do not just take your Bugatti to a used car salesman and say, hey, sell my car. No. No, you don't. You do not do that. Your Bugatti gets taken. Uh, it doesn't even get taken anywhere. You have a dealer, a salesman that sells it for you. You know, the same way they, you see all these sell my house, these million dollar house listings, blah, blah, blah. You know, these million dollar house listings. Matter of fact, let's do it even better because that is a show that plenty of people have watched. You know, million million dollar listing or some shit like that whatever it's called where they actually sell their million dollar house their mansions and they have people out in rodeo drive and beverly hills that sell their mansions for them you know those real estate agents eddie hearn is a real estate agent when it comes to this boxing business he's a real estate agent that's all he is he's making deals on behalf of anthony joshua it's the exact same thing so Anthony Joshua is off doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. Eddie Hearn is Anthony Joshua's mouth. He's Anthony Joshua's dealer, his real estate agent. Okay? What they do is they tell their real estate agents, this is the number, this is the amount of money that I'm willing to take for this house. This is the amount of money. This is my desired number this is my bottom line number meaning there's wiggle room but it's wiggle room to go down not wiggle room to go up anything above what I'm asking for I'm taking immediately because it's what I'm asking for if I'm selling my house a million dollar house and I'm selling my million dollar house for five million dollars five million dollar house I'm selling it for five million I want five million for my house, right? But in negotiations, which is the only per reason for negotiations, the buyer doesn't want to buy it for five million dollars. They think it's worth two million dollars. So we negotiate to meet somewhere in the middle. That's the point of negotiations, so that we can reach a deal, okay? Now in this case, Deontay Wilder is the buyer of this house. Anthony Joshua is selling his house for $50 million. So this deal that Deontay Wilder is offering is better than what Anthony Joshua is selling his house for. Because Deontay Wilder seen Anthony Joshua's house and said, you only want $50 million for it? No, 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 no. That's too cheap. So I'm going to give you 50 million. Then when I fix it up, whatever money that I make, if I decide to sell this house after I fix it up, I'm going to give you 50% of that. Because I think this house is worth 100 million. So I'm going to potentially give you 75 million for a house that you only want 50 million for. And for some reason, you guys think that's a bad deal for Hearn and, and AJ. Because now Hearn, being the real estate agent, is saying, uh, nah, let's talk about that. Let's meet and discuss. So in this case, Hearn is doing Anthony Joshua a disservice. Because Anthony Joshua said, I want 50 million dollars for my house 
That's what he said. I want 50 million. Give me 50 million dollars and I'll sign tomorrow. So he says, I'm willing to sell my fifth, my house for 50 million dollars. That's what I think my house is worth. I'm willing to sell my house for 50 million dollars. So give me 50 million dollars and I will sell my house. That's what Anthony Joshua said. So Deontay Wilder got the 50 million dollars, seen the house, liked the house, and offered him more. So instead of Hearn jumping on that deal because he offered him more than what even Hearn believed the house was worth. Because Hearn, Hearn said, hey, I, I don't think this house is worth $40 million. Between $40 and $60 million is what I think. I think it's worth that, between $40 and $60. So not only did Wilder um, offer, because because it, you know they're selling their house, they, their original offer that they offered to sell their house for was $12.5 million. That's what Hearn offered to sell the house for. Hearn offered to sell Anthony Joshua's house for $12.5 million. And Wilder said, that ain't enough. I can give you a better offer. I seen your house, I like it, I can give you a better offer. So Anthony Joshua says, oh, if you think, no, Wilder says, I think your house is worth $100 million. So Anthony Joshua is like, Okay, well, if you think my house is worth $100 million, well, give me $50 million. If you give me $50 million, then I'll sell my house tomorrow to you. Josh and Wilder says, that's not even good enough. I think your house is worth more than that. So I'm going to give you $50 million, and then I'm going to give you half of everything else. Because I think your house is worth more than that. What is there to talk about? Right now they're saying, eh, well, we're not going to agree to that because we want to talk. What are you talking about? What, talk about what? The buyer is offering you more than what you're selling it for. What deal on earth, what deal on earth would you have to talk about that and not agree? What deal on earth, what deal ever? If somebody is selling you a five cent piece of gum, and the buyer is willing to pay five dollars for it. Is that not a deal or not? Are you are, a, are you as the seller not going to say, "Oh, you want five dollars for this five cent piece of gum? Okay, here, here's the gum. Give me my five dollars." No, you're going to say, "Give me my five dollars every single time," unless you really don't want to sell that piece of gum. If you don't want to sell that gum, well then you're going to come up with excuses and you're going to want to talk about that piece of gum. But if you do want to sell that piece of gum, then you're going to say, give me my $5. Here's this gum, give me my $5. And let's make this, let's make this deal even sweeter. Let's make this deal even sweeter. Right? So Anthony Joshua same scenario selling this house you know for 12.5 he started out Deontay Wilder says uh, your house is worth a hundred million Anthony Joshua and Hearn don't believe it you know Hearn goes back and tells Joshua you know because Hearn's the real estate agent so he goes back and tells Joshua well they're they're saying this house is worth a hundred million dollars and Joshua's like what it's not worth that much Hearn's like yeah I know it's worth for between 40 million dollars and maybe 40 and 60 so Joshua says, fine, if they think it's worth $100 million, well, well give me $50 million up front. Well, give me my $50 million. And I'll, I'll sell my house. So Wilder says, I, I think it's worth $100 million. You only want $50 million, so I'm going to give you $50 million. I'm going to give you $50 million up front. And then I'm going to try to sell this house. And if I sell it for what I believe I'm going to sell it for, I'm going to give you half of that. So I'm going to give you more money because I believe that your house is worth $100 million. So I'm going to buy it from you, fix it up, and then sell it because I know I can sell it for $100 million. Right? And then once I sell it for $100 million, not only did you get the $50 million up front, I'm going to give you half of whatever I sell it for. So if I sell it for more than $100 million, I'm going to give you half of the total of what I make. Somebody on earth tell me how that is a bad deal for Anthony Joshua. Somebody on earth tell me 
how there's any, how, what is there to talk about at that point? What is there to talk about? Name a person on earth, anybody on earth that is not selling that house. I, you, there is no way, there is no way, there is a, there is no person on earth that would not sell that house, that wouldn't. No person on earth. There is, you, I dare, I challenge, I challenge anybody to find a real estate agent anywhere, anywhere, that will not, that will not agree to those terms. Find a real estate agent anywhere on earth. Matter of fact, you can find a real estate agent anywhere in the fucking solar system, in the galaxy, that will not sell the house. That, that is a deal of astronomical proportions in favor of the seller and the real estate agent. There is nothing about that deal, nothing about that deal that says the buyer doesn't want that house. Nothing. And everything about that deal that says the seller doesn't want to sell it. If the seller does not agree to that, the seller doesn't want to sell it. And in this case, the owner of those belts and the only person that can sell them is Anthony Joshua, whose mouthpiece is Eddie Hearn. The buyer in this situation is Deontay Wilder. I cannot make it any clearer than that. There is, it's not any clearer than that. That is, that is factually it. There is nothing to talk about at this point. There's just papers to be signed. That's it. It's just agree. Agree to my deal. Agree to take 50 million up front and then 50% of whatever else I make when I sell this house. You as the buyer, I mean as the as the seller, you're good. You are good at this point. Here's your $50 million. Even though you only thought it was $12.5 million in the beginning, I've done I've done more than doubled what you what you wanted. You know what I'm saying? Triple what you I tripled what you asked for. Just off the guarantees alone, I tripled it. And then after I tripled it, I gave you, I'm offering you more. So the real estate agent, Hearn, says, I don't believe this deal. You know, where, where is Wilder getting the money to buy this house? Since when ever has a real estate agent ever said, you need to show me proof of funds. Show me proof of funds before I sell you this house that I'm trying to sell. That's never happened. Never. There is probably thousands of drug dealers that don't have no proof of funds that have bought houses because the seller is not liable for selling the house when they don't know. They don't know. They're not privy to that. But in this case, they did show proof of funds. The real estate agent received his proof of funds from the seller. And then the real estate agent said, well, I never asked for proof of funds. I never asked for proof of funds. And instead of the buyer, I mean, yeah, the seller saying, wait a minute, but I, you said to me, we need to see proof of funds. You know, instead of the buyer being mad at the real estate agent, the buyer is mad at the seller. The buyer, a correction, correction, instead of the seller wanting to see proof of funds, I mean, saying anything like that, the seller is mad at the buyer. The seller is mad at the buyer as if the buyer did something wrong. But the buyer is the one giving you triple than what you asked for up front and then half of whatever he makes when he sells the house after he fixes it up and sells it. And you're mad at that buyer. You're saying what that buyer is saying is not a good deal. But you were you were willing to sell that house for 12.5 million. 
You were willing to sell it. You said that's a good deal. You were willing to sell it. The buyer came back with a better deal. It, that's astronomically in your favor. And you want to have talks about it. You want to have negotiations about it. You want to sit down and have meetings about that. No, no, no. That's not how it works. You offered $12.5 million, right? That was your deal that you thought was a good deal to sell your house. Me as the buyer, not, well, Wilder as the buyer, you're the seller, Wilder as the buyer, if Wilder as the buyer said, uh, mm, nah, I think that's $10 million, $5 million. If he wants to lowball you, then y'all have negotiations where y'all try to meet in the middle. Because this is your this is your line, and this is where Wilder's coming at, and he's trying to lowball you, so then you meet in the middle somewhere. Because you gotta come down and he's gotta come up. But this is your line, right? This is where you're you're at. Wilder is way up here. So that means you ain't gotta go nowhere. You you can you you there bruh, you in negotiations, you only if if there is any negotiations, it's it's to go down. It's you and the seller here, and y'all have to do this. But if, as you and the buyer, I mean, but if the buyer's up here, way more than what you're asking for, way more, then you agree immediately. It's more than what you're asking for. Astronomically more. So what is the negotiations for? What is the meetings for? There, there is no point for meetings. There is no need for meetings. The meetings are only there, the negotiations are only there, so that you guys can meet in the middle when they don't agree to your terms, when they don't agree to your offer, your 12.5. You need to meet in the middle because it's trying to lowball you. Wilder is not trying to lowball Anthony Joshua. Wilder is giving Joshua more than what he asked for, and he's giving it to him up front, and then he's giving him half of whatever else is made. That is a... That is... More than fair deal. That's probably the fairest deal I've ever heard, seen or heard in the sport of boxing in history. I've never seen a deal better than that. I've never seen a deal where the buyer is offering more to the seller than the seller is even asking. There has never been a deal where the, where the, the A side is getting just about everything they asked for and then some when it, when it, in, the, in the financial um, department. This is beyond bonkers. And people are sitting up here saying Wilder doesn't want to fight because he doesn't want to have negotiations to talk about. Negotiate what? What is there to negotiate? He's giving the man exactly what he asked for and then some. There is nothing to negotiate. There are no meetings to be had. I'm giving you everything you asked for and then some when it comes to financial. Agree to the money. Agree to the money. That's the principle of the fight. Agree to the principle of the fight. Then you guys can work out the deal, the, the rematch, the location. Y'all can work all that shit out. Agree to the money in principle. That's what this is about. The devil's not in the details. There is no details when it comes to the financial aspect. You ask for $50 million, I'm giving you 75 plus. There is no, there's nothing more to discuss about the money. Joshua himself even said, let's put the money to the side because we know the money's there. Well, then agree to it. If you know the money's there, agree to the money. That's all they're waiting for is you to agree to the money and then they can move on to something else. So for everybody out here talking about, oh, the, Wilder doesn't want to fight because he doesn't want to have negotiations, negotiate what? What is there to negotiate? In negotiations, you negotiate the money split. That is the top and number one priority in negotiations the money well they've already agreed to your price and then some so there should be no negotiations on that they're asking you to agree in principle to the money which is the major holdup in any fight so after you agree to the money then you guys can have all the meetings and hoopla y'all want but y'all haven't even agreed to that yet it's pathetic man this is pathetic. It is clear that Joshua does not want this fight. It is clear that Hearn does not want this fight. Because if they did, they would agree to the money in principle. This diva shit, like, oh, well, we, we deserve to, we deserve to get had the fight in the UK. Why? He's just a champion. He's not undisputed. 
Why doesn't Deontay Wilder deserve to have the fight in the U.S.? He's a champion too. Save the three belt shit. I don't, I'm not trying to hear that shit. I'm not trying to hear it. Not. I'm not. Not trying to hear it. Not trying to hear it at all. Champion versus champion. That shit y'all can work out in negotiations. Agree to the money at first. Agree to the major piece that holds up all fights, which is the money. Agree to the money. Then y'all can work out the details all y'all want. But the money is agreed on. And even, even that can be stopped if you don't get to where you want to get to. You don't have to sign nothing. Just agree to take the money. They're not asking you to sign anything. They're saying agree to take the money before we put more money into creating a fucking contract that you guys don't even have to agree to. I'm, I'm not, I'm beyond lost on how anybody can look at this and say, this is Wilder's fault. I, I'm, I am beyond, there is no deal on earth that anybody, anybody that is business savvy, there is no person that is business savvy that would not take this deal. There's no person that's business savvy unless they didn't want it. That's the only way you would not take this deal. And they're not even asking you to take it. They're asking you to agree to it. Agree to the money in principle is what Shelly Finkel said. Agree to the money and we can, we can have any meetings you want. But if you're not agreeing to the money in principle, then there's no point in having the meeting because you have the meetings and discussions for the money. But you've named your price. So since you've named your price, I've given you your price and then some. So what is there to negotiate about for the money? Nothing. Agree to the money and we can move on to the other negotiations. We can have the meetings for everything else. Rematch, locations, blah, blah, blah. We can have that discussion. But my terms are $50 million. This is my offer. $50 million with 50% of the proceeds. One fight deal in the U.S. Agree to take the money. Negotiate the rest. It's just that simple. If you want it. But you don't. Best fight the best and I'm out.